York University's Space Science Department has a long history with NASA's shuttle program. Just ask Professor Gordon Shepard. I was on sabbatical leave in Stockholm in 1979, and NASA released two uh, uh, announcements of opportunity. Uh, what that means is an invitation to provide an instrument that they would fly in space. And the first uh, announcement was for an instrument to be mounted on the shuttle. And the second one was for an instrument to be mounted on a satellite called the Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite, or URS for short. And I had, for a very long time, wanted to build an instrument that would measure winds in the upper atmosphere. In 1991, shuttle mission STS-48 launched a satellite carrying his windy instrument, allowing him to study winds between 80 and 300 kilometers above the Earth. It provided scientists with a revolutionary understanding of the Earth's upper atmosphere, establishing the existence of 24-hour tidal waves of winds that originate near the Earth's surface driven by the sun's heat rather than the Earth's gravity. York University's professor Ian McDade was also involved early on with the space shuttle, working with Canadian astronaut Mark Garneau in an experiment called OGLO. But this goes back to 1984, which was uh, you probably heard of Mark Garneau's first flight, the first Canadian astronaut, and um, there was an experiment involving uh, York. Well, his job uh, in the mission was to take photographs of the Earth's atmosphere. Steve McLean and Mark Garneau were in my house one evening, and this was on the wall. And uh, uh, Mark Garneau said to me, he said, uh, it's a very curious picture up there. And I said, it's yours? And he said, what? And I, he said, it's one of the photographs you took with the Oglo camera. And he said, don't believe you. And I said, yes, it is. So I, he hadn't seen it in false color, but I got him to sign it. It was Mark Renault's first experiment and Canada's first involvement with a shuttle mission. Well, the shuttle's last mission marks the end of an era, scientists are looking towards the future. York's researchers have been busy at work on SWIFT, a new satellite instrument that will measure winds and ozone in the Earth's stratosphere. We do uh, the instrument side of the work here. So the, the shuttle is the, is the transportation system to get what's down here up into the uh, uh, upper atmosphere or into the uh, into space. The undergrad program is designed now to feed into the graduate uh, program um, so it's an integrated program. Space engineering which is a newer uh, discipline is, uh, is unique in Canada. We're one of the world leaders in building this particular type of instrument but uh, we have always collaborated with other countries and so the future will be to continue to collaborate with other countries, with the European Space Agency, with India, with China, uh, with Japan. So we've had programs with all of those countries and we'll continue to have programs with those countries as well. No, there'll never be another space shuttle. It really was a unique instrument. It was a very bold design and very elegant. So it was a wonderful concept. But whatever NASA uses to replace it, I'm sure it'll be quite different.